Welcome to an exclusive skill capped guide for BFA patch 8.3. Throughout the final season of BFA, we'll be releasing select guides from our site here on YouTube. If you're interested in seeing more new content like this every week, alongside our exclusive matchup review series in which we cover in detail exactly how to win the hardest and most popular matchups, head over to skillcap.com. Hello everyone, Joe Fernandez here and today I'll be taking you through a comp analysis guide of what's OP in 8.3 RMP edition. For this guide we consulted Maro, who's a multi rank 1 mage and a blizzcon competitor, reaching the grand finals of 2019's arena world championship. We also used footage from Mare, a multi rank 1 priest who streams and plays rogue mage priest regularly at a high level. Make sure to give their streams a follow if you want to watch them. Rogue Mage Priest is an increasingly popular comp now in 8.3. This guide will teach you how to play the composition properly, but first we will discuss why it's now overpowered. Since 8.3 there has been quite a few changes that's been made which has been in favour for a composition like Rogue Mage Priest to work well in. Firstly, both Corruption Gear and the Breath of the Dying Essence has been added to the game. In short, both of these increase the damage output anyone can do, which for a Rogue Mage Priest can give them more burst damage, allowing for easier kills. It's important to know that both the Rogue and the Mage must use Breath of the Dying as a major essence when running this comp. This is because it gives you instant high ranged burst damage that can deal a ton of pressure. If used above 8% or below 20%, it has a very low cooldown as well, which can be used often throughout the game to help with more kill windows. During patch 8.3, Disc's damage got a bit nerfed, however their healing increased, giving them an easier time to stay alive and keep their teammates topped, which would have been much harder before 8.3. Also, if you get good corruption gear, you can easily compensate for the loss of damage as well. The last big change that occurred was the fact that powerful tank trinkets got nerfed, making them no longer desirable in 8.3. This is a buff to Rogue Mage Priest as tank trinkets made it difficult to kill most melee players, making them easier kill targets now. It also makes enemy healers have to heal more due to melee DPS not being able to use these tank trinkets. It's also worth noting that the best versions of this composition is Asa Fire Disc or Asa Frost Disc. The Subfire version can work decently too, but Asa remains too good to be topped and will most likely always be better than the subtlety version. Holy Priest also hasn't been seen yet, but is unlikely to be better than a Disc Priest. Now that we know why Rogue Mage Priest is OP in 8.3, we can now talk about how to play Rogue Mage Priest against three different kinds of matchups, dealing with Mirror Games, Melee Cleaves, and Caster Cleaves on the ladder. When it comes to mirror games, these will be a high level showcase of playing well aggressively, making offensive setups throughout the game in order to win. Your main strategy is to tunnel down the mage, forcing their big defensive cooldowns whilst crowd controlling the rogue and the priest. Crowd controlling the rogue reduces their pressure heavily, as well as negate their interrupts they could use, which could deny your mage's crowd control. Crowd controlling the disc will allow you to slaughter the mage, forcing them to kite and most likely use their own personal defensives, as well as deny extra pressure from the disc themselves. So as such, it's important that you and your teammates achieve these scenarios for your team whilst denying it for the enemy Rogue Mage Priest. This way you will ensure an offensive advantage throughout the game and will have more pressure. The opener will be important to land your crowd control and create pressure on the mage as this is where you can create the deadliest pressure. During this opener we see Mare in a cheap shot which will enable the enemy mage, Fried Kitty, to land a sheep on him without Mare being able to do anything about it. So Maro denies this, landing a beautiful counter spell on Fried Kitty, denying any crowd control onto Mare. Maro is now looking for a sheep on Radapai, but first he does a beautiful play by baiting his premonition using Shimmer, pretending he's trying to land a sheep on Radapai, but instead sheeps the rogue. Since his counter spell is still on Fried Kitty, Mario has created a scenario where he can easily land a sheep on Radapai due to his excellent plays. He then pops Combustion to pressure Fried Kitty heavily, forcing out his ice block during the first sheep on Radapai. Mario looks for a re-sheep, but is denied by an interrupt from the rogue. This brings us to denying CC chains on your own healer, as this will be extremely important for you to potentially hold onto your defensive cooldowns and have a much easier time to live. Doing this effectively involves rotating interrupts and premonition to deny sheeps and good communication between your team so you don't overlap these abilities. Here is an example where there are no interrupts ready, but Mare has his premonition ready. He also knows there are no kicks as his team have told him so, so when he expects the sheep to land, he premonitions it, 
breaking the full sheep on himself, allowing him to keep Mara alive. You want to also keep performing offensive setups as much as possible, whilst pressuring the mage in order to reliably force those defensive cooldowns and end up killing them. During the second go, Mara once again fakes out the premonition from Retopai whilst Fried Kitty lands a counterspell on Meh. This allows Mara to eventually land a sheep on Retopai, whilst Fried Kitty is low on HP. Since they have good pressure on Fried Kitty, even before the sheep landed, they can easily force out that last ice block. However, Mare missed his fear on Radapai, but he is still able to mass dispel the ice block off, whilst Mara lands a re-sheep onto Radapai. Alessia kidney shots the mage, delivering the final blow in this RMP mirror, winning in rapid timing. So that's how the mirror matchup generally goes. Now we can look on how to play against Caster Cleave type matchups. When dealing with Caster Cleaves, the general strategy is usually going for the least tanky caster, whilst crowd controlling the other one, and landing crowd control chains on the enemy healer to land kills. Rogue Mage Priest has the ability to take down any caster in the game, so make sure your kill target is whichever one works best within your team. This way you can lock down DPS targets, having kidney shot and kick to use on your kill target, as well as crowd control on the healer and the other DPS to reduce their pressure. As we know, a Rogue Mage Priest opener is always going to be important to generate initial pressure. Here we see Alessia set up triple crowd control with a sap on the Priest and cheap shots on the Shaman plus the Warlock. This allows Mara to get a follow up sheep cleanly. However, it breaks due to my numbing poison proccing, which is devastating for the RMP as they would have otherwise had a good opener. Later on, Mara secures a full sheep on the Shaman whilst pressuring the Shadow Priest. However, the Shadow Priest did a nice fake cast, allowing him to mass dispel his Shaman out. Mara once again lands a re-sheep shortly after, salvaging the pressure for his team. This is followed up with a double fear, locking down both the Warlock and the Shaman. The pressure and crowd control chains forces out the Spirit Link from the Shaman, as the Shadow Priest's emblem is about to fall, so it saves the Shadow Priest's dispersion cooldown. Rotating lockdown on the other caster and the healer will be important to time well for both offense and defense. As we know, crowd controlling the enemy healer will generate pressure and allow you to grab kills, but leaving the other caster free too much may be your downfall, especially if it's a fire mage or a destruction warlock. Here we can see the enemy destro warlock get one chaos bolt off with dark soul plus infernals, forcing the barrier from Mare yet still dropping Mara very low on HP, requiring a good temporal shield to recover his health. Surviving this pressure and creating your own will be essential throughout the game, making offensive setups whenever you can to get crowd control rolling, then playing defensively if needed to survive well. If you have crowd control for the healer and ways to reduce pressure from the other caster, then you can play offensively with relative ease. If unable to live safely against the caster cleave and you will most likely not be able to get a kill, then you may need to play defensively in order to survive and not drain your priest's mana too quickly. Here we can see that this is usually the scariest time when dealing with a destruction warlock during their offensive cooldowns as their chaos bolts can deal an absurd amount of damage. This may look like a scary situation for most, but Mara has his temporal shield ready, timing it to perfection on the chaos bolt. This allows him to live comfortably as well as keep playing offensively following up crowd control on the shaman. However, later on, after forcing dispersion, the enemy warlock pops both of his big defensive cooldowns again. This time, since there's no kill in sight for the time being, the Rogue Mage Priest retreat back line of sight in the warlock. After the situation is diffused and the cooldowns have faded, they begin to play aggressively again as Mara goes for a Dragon's Breath. Into a Triple Ring of Frost. Allowing them to crush the Shadow Priest. This forces the Trinket Spirit Link from the Shaman, as the Priest has no Dispersion or Life Swap to save himself. This also means that when Alessia has his Blind ready, they can easily dismantle the Shadow Priest when the Diminishing Returns fade on the Shaman if he has no dispersion back. So at this point, they set up for a kill, blinding the Shaman whilst pressuring the Shadow Priest. Alessia follows this up with a sap, allowing them to eventually land a kill on the Shadow Priest. 
As you can see, the RMP consistently set up offensive setups on the Shadow Priest with decent chain crowd control on the healer and played defensively when they needed to in order to survive against the Shadow Play. So that leaves us with the last type of matchup being against Melee Cleaves. When it comes to fighting Melee Cleaves, there are two different main strategies to adopt. You can go for the squishiest DPS target with crowd control chains on the healer, or you can tunnel down the healer whilst crowd controlling both DPS to reduce as much pressure as possible. Choosing these strategies will depend on the different types of melee cleaves combinations you can meet. Some melee, like Red Paladins or Arms Warriors, could be easier to tunnel in comparison to the likes of Death Knights and Windwalker Monks. The important thing is that most of the time, both strategies can work and you can change it up depending on how the game is going. The only time going on DPS could be quite dire is against Frost DKs, which means tunneling the healer is usually better against any Frost DK melee composition. These games can range from being extremely fast to getting quite damp depending on how well they can survive as well as how good your offensive goes are. Here they make an offensive go on to Lontar whilst Mare lands a double fear on the DPS. They pop Dark Archangel and with a late combustion in order to burst down Lonta whilst he sits the kidney shot. This forces out the Earthen Wool Tome and the Ward. It's important to make these offensive goes, try not to overlap too many offensive cooldowns in order to make defensive trades less beneficial for the melee cleave comps. Typically you don't want to overlap combustion with a vendetta unless you are positive you can land a kill. It's also going to force the Medi Cleaves to play a bit greedy with their defensive cooldowns, which could lead to potential kills if they play too greedy and don't have a solid defensive gameplay. Here we can see the RMP makes another offensive go onto Lontar with a kidney shot whilst sheeping the monk. The Demon Hunter is also flying in the air, which does a lot of damage, but it prevents him from being able to peel the Rogue Mage Priest at all. Marrow also uses Kleptomania spell still to get rid of Ghost Wolf, allowing them to burst Lonta heavily even without cooldowns. All three are doing damage with zero peels. Alessia commits a Vanish Cheap Shot whilst Lonta is extremely low to close out the game. Lonta trinkets but it's too late as the Alessia outplays him by garroting his trinket to deny the Spirit Link. Marrow finishes him off with the Breath of the Dying Essence punishing their greed and slaying the shaman within a minute of the game. Typically, games will last quite a bit longer and will also require good defensive gameplay as well as changes of strategy if tunneling the shaman or healer all game doesn't seem to pan out. In another game against the same team, they make a strong offensive go with Kidney Shot and Vendetta whilst Lonta is hovering around 50% HP. This forces out the darkness from Fuston in order for Lonta to hold onto his trinket and other defensive cooldowns. The enemy melee also turn their attentions onto Alessia, pressuring him to deny his uptime on Lonta, forcing him away. When this happens, you may swap your attention to the melee DPS until your rogue is safe, then look for healer swaps with Kidney Shot later. Much like the Castle Cleave games, it's important to play offensive as much as possible whilst living well so you don't play too defensive, which can easily cost you the game. During stuns on the mage, they can be extremely vulnerable and take a lot of pressure, which can force defensive cooldowns easily. Mare, knowing this, uses his grip onto Marrow, getting him out of the Fist of Fury channel, reducing the pressure from the melee cleave. Even with this, they have a ton of pressure on Marrow, forcing him to use a defensive dragon's breath and shimmer away, whilst Mare knocks both of the melee away, as well as Lontar out of his Earthen Wall Totem. So they can still play aggressively with Alessia landing a kidney shot onto Lontar, although Marrow is struggling to connect with what he can, not getting too much pressure off himself. They still force the Astral Shift though with this Dark Archangel attempt, thanks to Mare knocking Lontar out of his Earthen Wall Totem. Keeping up with these offensive plays as often as possible with good pressure should eventually lead to finding an offensive setup on the melee cleaves without a good answer from them to deal with. To do this effectively, you'll want to track the important defensive cooldowns from the enemy team that can deter your pressure, forcing them with good setups and finding setups where they lack good defensive cooldowns in order to win. For example, against this composition, these are the extremely strong defensive cooldowns that can make them live your offensive setups, using as little as one or multiple of them in order to survive. Note that there's a difference between these cooldowns, some being beneficial for the entire team, whilst some are only good for survivability on themselves. This means that without their self-defensive cooldowns and trinkets, they are prone to dying easier 
and will need assistance of their teammates in order to live. We can see this play out in this match well. Whilst the RMP are tunneling down Lonta for quite a while, Maru pops his combustion on Lonta, creating heavy pressure during his ascendance. They land a kitty shot on him at around half health, with Alessia popping Vendetta as well, which forced Lonta to trinket it in order to reliably live. This now means that they could potentially set up a blind go onto Lonta in order to kill a DPS target. So later, whilst they are taking heavy pressure, Mayor uses his barrier on Lanestia in order for him to live. Meanwhile, Mara pushes in for crowd control onto Lontar whilst they turn their focus on Rezus, seen as they both don't have their trinkets ready. Mario secures a full sheep onto Lontar, forcing out the touch of karma from Rezus, which is overlapped with the reverse magic from Fuston. Even though this overlap seems small, due to the defensive cooldowns being forced, the next heavy crowd control chain onto Lontar, provided they can shut down Rezus and crowd control Fuston, will mean that Rezus can be taken down. This is exactly what happens as Alessia blinds the shaman with a kidney onto Rezus and a sheep onto Fuston, denying the darkness from being used and creating the 1v3 situation. This allows him to crush Rezus during the blind, although he just about stays alive due to darkness. Although with a follow-up sheep onto Lontar, this just about secures the deal and they are able to take down Rezus. That covers everything on What's OP in 8.3 Rogue Mage Priest Edition. Hope you guys enjoyed this guide, and if so, make sure to plus skill this guide. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.